Welcome to Quant Concepts. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to calculate the probability of a type 2 error in a hypothesis testing question. As a recap, a type 2 error occurs when we do not reject the null hypothesis when it's in fact false. This lecture is a little more advanced as there is some assumed knowledge required in order to keep up. I assume the viewer has a basic understanding of hypothesis testing, such as setting up the null and alternate hypotheses, rejection regions, standardizing a sample mean, and using the cumulative standard normal probability table. Alrighty, moving on. The best way to teach this concept is by working through an example, so here goes. Peter claims that the average score for the final exam is less than 60%. You gather a sample of 51 test papers and calculate the sample average to be 57%, and the population standard deviation to be 12%. Suppose the lecturer, Professor Bigwig, knows that the true average for the exam is 58%. Calculate the probability of a type 2 error when testing Peter's claim at the 1% significance level. Now, it might seem that there's a lot of information here to absorb, um, but let's break this down into two big steps. The first step is to conduct the actual test. So Peter claims that the average score for the final exam is less than 60%. Let's conduct that test, test. let's test his claim at the 1% significance level. All right, so Peter claims that the average score for the final exam is less than 60%. Let's write, the, let's write down this claim. So Peter claims that the true average is less than 60%. The counterclaim, or the complete opposite of that, must be that the true average is larger than or equal to 60%. So we've, got, we've written down the two possible claims. The one with the um, equal sign is the null hypothesis. The one without the equal sign must be the alternate hypothesis. Now let's write this up in the correct format. So HO, mu equals to 60. H1, mu is less than 60. Right, and we know that this is a uh, lower tail test because if we look at the alternate hypothesis, we have a less than sign, so it's a lower tail test. The next step is to write down everything we know uh, given in the question when conducting this test. So what are we told? We're told that um, we're testing 51 test papers, so that's our sample size. Our sample average is 57% and our population standard deviation is 12% and test at the 1% significance level. So let's write all this stuff down. Okay, so mu, which is the population average that's assumed true until proven otherwise. So basically the null hypothesis is assumed true until proven otherwise. And the null states that mu is equal to 60. Um, we are told that the sample average is equal to 57. We know the sample size is equal to 51. Um, the standard deviation in exam paper scores is 12. And we're told to test at the 1% significance level. So alpha is equal to 1%. All right. Now we continue um, pretending as if we're actually going to conduct this test. Okay, so let's, so let's actually draw the distribution as if we're conducting this test. Now we assume that the distribution of sample means follows a normal distribution because their sample means and our sample size is sufficiently large. So referring to the um, uh, central limit theorem. Now we assume the null hypothesis is correct until proven otherwise. And so we would assume that um, our sample means, our sample averages um, should have an average equal to the population average. Our sample averages should converge around the population average. Now, if we look at the, our alternate hypothesis, there's a less than sign less than sign. So we know that this must be a lower tail test. If it's a lower tail test, it means we have one rejection region on the left tail of the distribution. And so that's our rejection region. And um, because we're testing at the 1% significance level, that rejection region must comprise of 1% of the distribution. Now, the key question here is, what is the critical value? What is the cutoff for this rejection region? Now, how we figure this out is we have to use the standard normal distribution. So we convert this into a standard normal distribution so we can use our Z tables. So let's convert this into our standard normal distribution. In our standard normal distribution, it's the exact same distribution, but it has 
a sample mean of zero. Um, and it's the same distribution except the values have been converted. Okay, so we still have the same rejection region here. So it's the same rejection region that cuts off the bottom 1% of the distribution. And the critical value here we'll call ZC for the um, Z critical value. Okay, the Z tables that I have are the cumulative probability tables. That means that if we have a Z value, it will give us the area to the left of that value, which is exactly what we have here. So we know that the probability or the area to the, to the left of this Z value, Z critical value, is 1%. So we want to look up 1% in our tables. So let's look for it. And find that I think the closest thing that we can find to 1% is this value here, 0 0.0099. Now we look at the corresponding column and the corresponding row and you'll find that it's negative 2.33. Okay, so now that we've figured out what the Z critical value is, okay, we know that this is negative 2.33. We can write that down here and we can now solve for the critical value or the cutoff for the rejection region in the original distribution of sample means. Okay, so the formula that we use, it's pretty much just the opposite. It's just the opposite of standardizing. Okay, so C equals to mu plus ZC sigma root N. Recall that the, um, that the Z score tells us how many standard errors a, um, a value is from the hypothesized population mean. So what we have here is a z-score of negative 2.33. So this tells us that our cutoff value here is 2.33 standard errors below the population mean here. Um, and it's below because it's a negative z-score. Okay, So that's how we interpret it here. Okay, So let's sub these values in. Um, negative 2.3 sorry it's a bit tight so that's times okay 12 on root 51 okay so this tells us that the critical value is 2.33 standard errors below our hypothesized mean and you punch that into your calculator and you'll get 56.08 okay. so what we know now is that this cutoff this cutoff for our rejection region here is 56.08 okay the so next step is to just tidy everything up and to draw the distribution of the test so this is where we'll actually calculate the probability of a type 2 error so let's draw the distribution of the test okay so the null hypothesis we, is assumed true until proven otherwise so we assume the population means equal to 60 we know we have our rejection region here, and we've just figured out that the cutoff is 56.08, the critical value. All right, let's look back at the question now. So apart from the information given for the test, when we want to calculate the type 2 error, we're given this additional information. Uh, Professor Bigwig knows that the true average for the exam is 58%. Now let's think back to what the definition is of a type 2 error. A type 2 error is when the null hypothesis is not rejected when it's in fact false. Okay, so when you don't reject a false null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 60, and we now know that that's wrong because a professor knows for a fact that the true average is 58%. So what's the probability that we don't reject that false null hypothesis? Let's look here. So this is a rejection region. The red bit is a rejection region. That's where we reject this false null hypothesis. So where do we not reject this false null hypothesis? This area here. This is when we don't reject the null hypothesis. And we now know for a fact that it's false because the professor knows that the true average is actually 58%. Okay, the next thing that we have to draw is the distribution of, is the true distribution. Okay. So this was the distribution of our test, but now Professor Bigwick has told us what the true distribution is. He's told us what the true population mean is, so let's draw that. And we draw that relative to the original, we draw that relative to the distribution of the test. So it's slightly shifted to the left because we know that the true average is slightly smaller. 
58%. That's what P Professor Bigwig has told us. And we look at this critical value here, 56.08 from our test, and we also draw that on the true distribution. So that's 56.08. Now, the probability of a type 2 error. So we look at the type 2, the error shaded for the type 2 error, and we shade that on our true distribution. Now, this shared region here is the probability of a type 2 error. When you draw sample means from the population, they'll be drawn from this true distribution. So the probability of a type 2 error is actually, actually lies in this true distribution, not the distribution of your test. Alright, so we need to find the probability, so what do we do? When we need to figure out probabilities, we standardize. So let's standardize this distribution. So we draw the standard normal distribution, mean of 0, okay. And we need to figure out what this value is here. Okay. And then, similarly, this is the probability of our type 2 error. Okay, so what is this cutoff here on our standard normal distribution? Well, we simply have to standardize 56.08. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little box here just to show you that it's, <laughs> it's our little writing space. Okay, so Z equals 2, so um, standardizing follows this formula, remember? Okay, so we sub our values in. Okay, so so we want to standardize on this distribution. So the x hat or the x value we're looking at is 56.08. Okay, minus. Okay, so we're looking at the true distribution. So the true mean is 58. The mu is 58. Divided by um, 12 on root 51 equals to negative 1.14. Okay, so what we know is that this cutoff here is negative 1.14. Okay, so let's look up negative uh, 1.14 in our, our cumulative Z table. Okay, so I'll find negative 1.1. It's here. So that's this row. Sorry, ouch. <laughs> that's this row. And then negative 1.14. So we look up this column here. Okay, so it relates to, it relates to that number. Okay, um, 0.12714. Okay, so let's draw that in our distribution. Okay, so we know that this here, this area here, so basically, um, since that was a cumulative uh, probability table, it gives us the area to the left of our Z value, okay? So we know that's 0 0.12714, okay? But that's not the area we're after, we want the area to the right here. But we can use the complement rule, right? So if we've got the area to the left here, we can minus that from 1, and we know what the area is here to the left, which is what we're after, the shaded region. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.12714 gives us 0 0.87286. Excellent. And that's it. And that's actually the probability of a type 2 error. So we can just write that down. Okay, so therefore, the probability of a type 2 error is 87.286%, which is pretty high. Um, so there's an 87.286% chance that we don't reject the null hypothesis, even though the null hypothesis is incorrect. Let me quickly summarize the steps to calculating the probability of a type 2 error. Let's, let's look at our working here. So the first thing we have to do is we look at the claims um, that are being made and we draw the distribution of the test. So you need to know what tail test it is um, and you need to figure out what the critical value is for your rejection region on the um, distribution of your sample mean, so in this distribution. And we call that the distribution of your test. Then we draw the true distribution. So in this case, Professor Bigwig told us the true, um, true population average. So we draw this true distribution in relation to our distribution of the test. So it's slightly moved to the left in our case. Um, and then we draw this rejection region on our true distribution. But more importantly, we find this area here where you don't reject the wrong null hypothesis. When you don't reject this false null hypothesis, 
you draw that area in your true distribution. And then you just need to find this area here, which is a probability of your type 2 error. And so then we standardize. We standardize, we used our Z tables, and we figured out what this area is here. And that is our probability of the type 2 error. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys found this lecture helpful.